I was just going. Right. Gerard, how old are you? Like 25? No, I'm almost 30. Oh my goodness, Richard, he's ancient. Maybe <laughs> from the version of Gerard. You got any young bucks there? What do you mean? Us, us old people, like our middle-aged selves here, Richard and I, <laughs> we've got like decades on you. All right, let me know when we're ready to go live. I think we're live. Oh, we're live. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy 2019. I am Inga Springman. I'm here with my two favorite Thursday co-workers, co-partners, uh, co-hosts, Gerard, all the way from the Philippines. And Richard Smith, all the way from Katy, Texas. And George yeah. down there. We're like the Brady Bunch here, minus the other. <laughs> yeah, if we get uh, if we get nine people on one, we'll literally have, wait, how many are in the Brady Bunch? Nine? Well, no, there's six. There's three, six, three kids, eight. Because there's two but, parents. Oh, and then Alice. You're and right, Alice nine. is in the middle, yeah. You're right. We, uh, a while. Gerard, do you have any yeah. idea what we're talking about? Brad has no idea what we're talking about because he was not old enough to know about the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I'm, not real, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, so uh -huh. just say yes, Gerard. It's okay. We'll, we'll show you the Brady Bunch. <laughs> but we, we're back, you guys. And, um, you know, thanks for joining us again on another weekly segment of virtual remote scout assistant and why virtual assistants are essential for the growth of your business, both real estate and your mortgage business. No, no matter really what kind of business you're in, a virtual assistant can really, really help make that business of yours grow and flourish, having very little expense and lots of upside growth. So today we're going to talk about all of the tools that are essential that you need in order to have your virtual assistant on their A game in 2019. And Richard has had a virtual assistant for many, many years. Gerard was, has been his virtual assistant how many years now? Gerard. Turning seven Gerard. this year. Seven. Seven right. years this year? Holy yeah. moly. <laughs> seven years. So th these guys are not just, you know, you know, boss and coworker. They are literally business partners and yeah. they do a lot of things together. They know each other personally. They've grown relationships. They um, you know, I'm wondering when Richard's gonna get over to the Philippines to visit Gerard and his family. And oh, this year. This year. I'm awesome. entirely yeah. unsure about that. No, no, <laughs> this this year it's it's a trip. It's on, right? Am I invited? Oh, yeah. Sure. I asked my team to pass. So, just to segue you guys in, we've talked all about virtual assistants, why they're essential in your business, why you need them, how you can possibly grow a huge business in one year just by adding this significant other person to your organization. So today, like I said, we're going to talk about tools. We're going to talk about the essential tools that you need and not to overwhelm you because we, we want to keep this as simple as possible so that everybody goes out there and their number one focus is to grow their business, but to get help to do so and what kind of things are necessary to, in order to do that. So Richard, I'm going to let you just kind of go through your list with Gerard um, as, as a person who you know, has employed virtual assistants for many years. Sure. Yeah. And the, the most important part of not only a virtual assistant relationship, but having a virtual assistant to help us grow our business, whether you are a loan officer, a realtor, an insurance agent, it doesn't matter. Um, but the most important part of it th that I think is communication. So what we've done is uh, Gerard and myself both have put together a list of, and this is over the years, um, different tools that we've used to ensure that the communication is stellar um, with the virtual assistant and yourself, but also with your clients. Um, because we, we know the VAs do a lot of phone calls. So they're calling, uh, for in my, in my case, they're calling potential people that want to buy a house. They're calling real estate agents. So um, there's a few different tools, but I'll tell you guys exactly which ones I use. So my virtual assistants, when they make outbound phone calls, they simply use Skype. And so um, what we do, me as um, the phone that I want my virtual assistants to use, 
I want it to be a local number. So with Skype, you can order a local phone number. So when your virtual assistant's making outbound phone calls, it's a local number. Um, and in my case, Katie, Texas. So when somebody ans when someone gets a call, they see it as local. Cause you, you know, I've, I found a lot of people don't answer the phone. It's not local, especially if it's like a, an 800 number or something. And so it helps ensure that it, on the same hand, the, I would say 99.9% .9 of the people that our VAs call have no idea that they're in the Philippines. They feel like um, it's a local number, uh, their voice sounds stellar, so and nobody needs to know. It's not something that, that people need to know. So um, that's what we use. That seems very simple, but Skype has really, really done well. I know there's other companies out there that do uh, phones and they're um, more expensive. Uh, Skype is literally, what is it, Gerard? Probably $14 a month with a local number? Yes, <clears throat> 14 to um, $20 right. every three months, I guess. The billing it's cycle. Unlimited. Like you, you, you. Unlimited minutes, right? Unlimited, right. unlimited data. Yeah. So let's talk about this real quick. Okay, so Richard goes to Skype.com, right? Orders right. the service, sets it all up for his virtual assistant. Gerard, what does that look like on your end? What exactly, what exactly what tools do you need? I'm sorry, what is so that again? So Richard goes in, in the United States, he goes and sets up your Skype account. What uh -huh. does it exactly look like on your end? Like, what do you- It's just the same. I mean, it's just the same. I've been helping, you know, um, our clients here to set up their own um, Skype account. So technically for, for, for as long as we can log in and use the credentials that you use so we can set that up for you. So you don't need a phone, a cell phone service. You don't no, need we just need our computer. computer. It's it's cloud based. It's computer based, and there's a mobile app for it. Okay, so you guys understand that you don't need an actual cell phone service. Okay, as long as your VA has internet access and a functioning laptop that has audio, right? Yeah, you can use you can it. That's all the essentials. And I think Skype has the the criteria that you you would need, right? They right. they put that in their um. Description mm -hmm. of and, and, you know, aside from the um, subscription, aside from the calling part, I mean, um, Richard and I use Skype to communicate to each other, like on a daily basis, like we, we text there and sometimes we do some video calls, which is actually for free. So the only add on that um, you can have with Skype is, you know, your um, local number that you that you want th that you may want to order, as well as the unlimited subscription to United States and Canada. I think, you know, um, United States and Canada is um, like a package already. And well, based on my, my own experience though, I think aside from using Skype, if you have a Ring Central account, if yep. you're a realtor or a loan officer having a Ring Central account, so it would be convenient for you. So you can just, you know, contact um, Ring Central support and order an extension number. And I would recommend Ring Central though, because of its um, text capabilities. Okay. So, so um, how does so it there's ring, a holistic it, approach. Uh, Gerard, how does Ring Central integrate with Skype? Like, so what is that actually? I, I want people. I don't want them to be confused as to what all of this looks like. Ring Central is a. It's um a cloud-based app as well. Yes. It's a cloud-based app, and it can be used yes. on your computer. Computer and your and on, on your phone. And there's your phone. an app too. So there's an app, and you install that app, and you put your Skype number into it, or how does oh, no, that? Work? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, Ring Central will provide their own number. Okay, we'll so provide their, their own extension. So basically, that's those are the two best options that we have. So you could use one or the other. You, know the other. Well, you don't need to use them both, right? Okay, Perfect. just to make okay, awesome. Okay, and, great. And your, so Ring Central, it costs a little bit more, but it does have the options of also having the ability to text. So, so if you're wanting mm -hmm. your virtual assistant to not only make calls, they can make tech, they can send text messages. Um, and the way I've always done it, if you're the realtor, you're the loan officer, you're the insurance guy, you just add that number as one of your numbers. So like what I'll tell um, my realtor partners, let's say, I'll send them a text through this different number that's not my cell and I'll tell them, hey, this is my text number. Go ahead and save that in your phone. And so, you know, you'll get text messages from me and if you want to text me back. So then they... Every, you know, your clients, everybody saves those numbers. So you 
you can have additional numbers. And so now your VA has the ability to respond quickly to a text message or to a phone call. So, so you, if you're busy, if you're in uh, appointments, your customers are getting taken care of. So those, those are two of the best options when it comes to uh, phone calls for, you know, phone calls that your VA is going to make or communication via text. And then Inga, Gerard touched on this too. And that's the other part of Skype that I like is it's the, it's really the best way to communicate to your VA. So if you're wanting to touch base with your VA during the day, uh, like Gerard and I will just uh, send a Skype message real quick. Hey, how are you? Or what's going on? Or, Hey, did you do this? Or, Hey, do you, do you need my help with this? You know, whatever those little messages are, um, we can communicate back and forth that way or like, or to do a quick video call that might just take a minute. And it's, it's like an instant connection between us. us. That really helps. How, how is the service you guys, how is the, um, is it all dependent on the internet that is over there in the Philippines or is it all dependent on like Skype's quality? Like, are there a lot of drop calls? I'm sure people want to know like what, you know, what, what is the level of service that Skype provides? Because it was a lot different a couple of years ago when everyone was using Skype right. to talk to foreign, you know, families. Um, but a, now it's, you know, it's more business integrated. So it should, I'm assuming the quality is a lot better. Oh yeah. That's, there, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, considering the, the technology nowadays, I mean, I can't say that Skype is a perfect 10, but in terms of the quality of the calls, um, I think the the only change that I wouldn't like about Skype is your ability to not record your okay. personalized voice recording. Right. Okay. Before we were able to um, to do it, but right now it's like um, they are providing their own recording. What do you mean by recording? Like if you're going to do a voice message? Yes. Yes. So it can no longer be um, personalized compared to oh, Ring Central. Wow. Yes. Okay. And circling back to Ring Central about you know the texting thing or the instant communication that we can that we were doing um, on Skype as well. Um, Ring Central has their own integrated app called Glip. So it's similar to Skype. So you can text there. You can chat there rather. So okay. all in one. And um, I think Ring Central also has their integrated video calls or um, webinars, one in one. Do you know what the video cost conference. is for Ring Central, Gerard? Um, roughly $20 a month. Okay, so a month. So Skype is significantly in, less expensive, mm -hmm. but you have a couple more bells and whistles with Ring Central. And how hard is it to set up Ring Central? You've set it up many times. So. It's not hard at all. <laughs> okay, so it's, I, because I'm thinking that people are watching this and made it, may not have ever heard of Ring Central. They have no clue what any of these things are. They've never used them. So let's, you know, I want to get dumb it down to the basics. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. Easy upload, installation. Upload an app, right? On your phone. Yeah. You put it on, on your, your phone computer. Or, or on your computer. They provide you with a number. Yes. Okay. And a subscription to call. It's United States. It's unlimited, number. right? Okay. Yes. Super simple. So calls come into your phone, come back to your phone, right? Through that number. So someone returns your call. You'll it's On your phone number. or on your computer. Okay. So it'll come either way, right? Yes. Now, if can Richard monitor your Ring Central account? Yes. And as well as the Skype account for as long as a virtual assistant won't change okay. the credentials. Okay. Because, so you know, Ring Central is... Richard can log into your account with your credentials, right? And see exactly the activity that you've been doing. Like yes, if, so the number you know, of calls made. The calls you made. Yeah. All the text messages exact that minutes. Back and forth. Okay. Same thing exact with Skype. Minutes, exact um, seconds. And the number that you call. Basically, we, I'll, I will set the account unnamed. So if, like, let's say some, let's say Gerard helps a realtor hire a virtual assistant. The realtor is going to set up that account and then give those credentials for their VA to use um, just because they're ordering it from the U.S. I know sometimes they're just trying to order it. Like it, it's kind of like if you go to work for a company, you're not going to set everything up yourself. The right. company provides that for you. So, so you would provide that for them and then 
um, to answer your question, yes, you would have access to it and you can make changes and, and all okay. that. Gotcha. Okay. And you only, you only need one account, right? Mm -hmm. That's all that's essential for, for the VA. Great. Oh, no. Um, for example, if you have your, um, technically you need two, one for yourself and one for the virtual assistant. Oh, okay. And for your, um, we're, 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 we're talking about Skype here. And, um, if on Skype, um, you need, you need to have a separate personal account that doesn't have any subscription and you need gotcha. the other one for the virtual assistant. Okay. Understood. But for Ring Central, you only need one account, right? Yes. I think so. Is that right, Mr. Smith? Yeah. Well, one account and you can get multiple users on Extension. that account. Yeah. If you don't want to be a user. Yes. Right. How do you, but you would have to still have Skype in order to communicate with your virtual assistant, right? No matter what. Yes. I think at the beginning, it's the easiest. In the beginning. Most. Okay. So that, but we have clients here, you know, that, that out of, I mean, out of their convenience, they would want to use Google Hangouts. Some okay. would use WhatsApp, and some would use even Facebook Messenger. So depending okay. on you. Right. 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 Okay. So, so the technology is there, you guys, in order to monitor, to communicate, and to have your virtual assistant in charge of your phone communications outbound. And also inbound, right? You can set up things that are coming yeah. inbound. Um, or to so monitor the hours, you know, going back to um, the monitor thing, if you're really, you know, want to build trust your virtual assistant and, you know, if you want to micromanage or, you know, uh, monitor the hours or track the hours, you know, some of our clients here use timedoctor.com, okay. T-I-M-E-D-O-C-T-O-R.com. Time doctor. Okay. And that's, a, that's also a cloud-based website. Does that record yes. your computer screen? Yes. And your number of types, I think, for okay. every hour. Every hour. Does it take snapshots? Of yes. Your okay. Yeah. But Richard has a different take on it. I mean, he didn't, you know, um, he didn't um, get a time doctor in managing me before. Right. So, so but, but for those people, for those people that don't feel like they uh, <laughs> want to micromanage, you know, every second of the day, they can at least take a snapshot at the end of the day and say, like, hey. I see that you're this much screen time on your computer and this is what you were look, you know, doing. I mean, essentially more for themselves than it is for micromanaging, like to know that, th that their assistant yes. is there doing. working and not sleeping. Right. right, right. I'm sure that's a different take on it. I mean, he managed me differently. Right. I, I'm a, I'm a believer in managing with, by results. Um, but on the same hand, if you, if you're a realtor or a loan officer and you want your virtual assistant to make calls, the, the goal or the quota will be, let's just say, how many appointments, how many phone appointments scheduled. You've got to tell them how many you expect and then you manage by results. If, if, you know, somebody can make a thousand phone calls and not get one appointment, then what good is making a thousand phone calls? So if I, I've always believed in managing results and it does take time to build trust uh, with your assistant, just like it, you would build trust with any here in the States that worked in your office for you. So it's, um, it's about trusting, it's about managing by results, but, and then th this is actually a good segue into uh, Gerard's comment that you don't want to micromanage. And one of the best ways not to micromanage, and this tool is by far one of my favorite that I've ever used and it's absolutely free and it's asana.com. So for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's asana.com. And basically Asana is a task management, project management software that you can download or it's actually, uh, it's online. So you can get an account, you can download an app on your computer, you can download the app on your phone and literally it's, is by far the best way to manage your virtual assistant without having to micromanage. Because um, I know Gerard has run into this before, but we've had people that have said, you know, I just don't have time to have a virtual assistant because I need to train them. I need to constantly tell them what to do and I just don't have time for it. And that kind of defeats the whole purpose because there to help you and they're there to help grow your business and have more freedom. So if, to, if you check out Asana.com, basically 
Asana allows you to help your VA um, know what tasks you want, the time blocks that are done the same day, same time every day, or they're one, one off tasks, but it allows you to manage those tasks. It allows you to prioritize them for your assistant. Um, it allows you to put due dates. So, in, and so this is kind of a tip that I do is if, if I have 20 different things I want my VA to do, um, I need to prioritize that in this it takes almost no time. I can tell the VA what day to do it, when, when it should be done. And then, so their whole week might be mapped out. And then obviously that frees up my time to do activities to grow my business. And then my assistant is in the background doing all of those things without me having to micromanage. The other cool thing about Asana is you literally don't need to email back and forth with your VA because in Asana, you can upload documents, you can message through Asana. If I have a, a document, let's say an old Excel spreadsheet of old past, I literally can go to Asana, make phone calls two hours a day, on past clients, upload this Excel spreadsheet into Google Docs, and then make notes on the outcome of each call. So all of that gets done. They have access to everything. Um, and I don't have a need to micro. Do you have any thoughts on Asana, Gerard? Yeah, I, I like Asana because, um, you know, you, you can just put deadlines on there. And um, for example, if you're like a business realtor, loan officer, or um, insurance agent, you could take the time and you really have to invest time if you want your business to grow. Right. That's the bottom line. So you're going to need to take time to, you know, um, to put and lay out everything on there and you're free to go. You just need to be clear with the instructions. Um, for, for example, if you want to have your virtual assistant go in into a specific website and do some data gathering for you or, you know, go into your MLS and um, do some skip tracing. So you may need to provide everything, instructions as to how they can go in, the website link, as well as, um, you know, the login information. So, you know, later in the day, you, do, you won't need to really sit down there and yes. monitor. What's, what's the best... Uh, way to send a, a message or a an explanation to do something to your va like a, a step as is it would you do like a screen share or like a say you say richard you're like you want to show gerard to hey okay. i need you to set this up that like what is the best tool that you have found that works so i what i use and it's actually on my list because and i'll give you an example of how powerful this is and gerard might have something better but i what I use is Jing Project. And if okay. you look it up, it's, it's I like Jing also. J I N G. Just yeah. Google Jing Project, or I, I believe it's jingproject.com. Yeah. So basically, think about it this way. If let's say I want a bunch of changes done to my website, it's very hard to text or even to talk about the things that I want done um, because then my VA is writing notes or I'm not explaining it correctly. So what Jing project allows you to do is either take a picture or a video of your desktop computer. So I'll take a video of the computer and then I'll put my, uh, my mouse and kind of show, Hey, right here. Um, can you change this wording and blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm explaining what I want done on video. So it has my audio, it has my voice and it has video of the, of my computer. And so anytime there's things that I want to make sure that I'm communicating correctly to my VA, because obviously we want things done right, um, you can make a quick video of it and then shoot them over a link. They can watch the video. Uh, and when it's with some things, it's literally like you can watch it, hit pause, take care of it, and then go back. And so there's a lot of, uh, and, and then taking screenshots which most computers now allow that. But with Jing, um, do you have any, what other, what am I missing on Jing, Gerard? I know there's some other things that we do with it. I think you cover Jing very well. I think, you know, I love it, um, especially when you do um, those video clips. 
you know, just to use, um, just send the message or, you know, I'm um, send me instructions as to where I should go, how I'm going to do that. So yeah, that is something that I would really recommend as well to recommend. Also, I, I use Jing for like just capturing, you know, photos. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, just simple stuff, you know, like you can write on Jing, like you can like, circle things yeah. on Jing. Yeah. You can record your screen. There is a limit though. I, I think with the regular free Jing, there's a limit of how the, the time, like I think it taps out like a five right. minutes. Uh, yeah, it's it's short. You can purchase uh, Camtasia. You can, is it Camtasia? Or, or even screen, Screenomatic. Um, Screenomatic right. is the one that like, lets you record your screen so that you can give instructions. I, any of those things, you guys, those are really kind of um, easy things to integrate on your computer so that you can send instructions right. to anybody, whether it's your the person down in the hallway, you know, or your processor, you know, at corporate that you need, you know, yeah. that you Step by step. So not just with your virtual assistant, I would get either Jing or Screenomatic. They're both free. They're awesome. And here's the catch. Um, if you don't have time to research for all of these apps or you know, for the websites that you want to use in the future, you can use your virtual assistant to do right. the research for you. And right. send you a follow-up manual or follow-up, uh, I mean a follow-up, I mean instructional manual. Richard asked right. me to do a lot of manuals before. Is Absolutely. You know, I just heard that the other day. I was talking to uh, one of my LOs and they were telling me how they put together a manual of everything that you need to be successful in your, um, your, you know, your business, you know, start, from start to finish. And they were like, I did this all myself. And I was thinking, God, if you could have just given somebody instructions yeah. to do that, how time you would say, because that didn't make you any money. You know, that's great right. for your employees coming in. But guess what? Today, it costs you a lot of money to do that yourself. Yeah, the way I look at it is every minute that a loan officer, a realtor is spending on those type of tasks, it's taking them away from those money-making activities to get more business. And so not only, and, and so this is the way I look at it, having a virtual assistant not only gets me to spend more time on money-making activities to help me increase my business, but they're also helping increase the business by making the call. So I always suggest to people, it's great if there's certain type of calls you don't like to make, you can get someone else to do them for you. But if you're someone else, if your virtual assistant is making calls on your behalf and you're making calls on your behalf, then that's how you double yourself and double your business and have more freedom because you're, it's super, super focused. So that is... Um, I think that's huge. And a lot of, a lot of times you want to think of it that way. And so thinking about getting more done quicker or getting more done by having a virtual assistant help, I'm going to, I want to bring up one other tool that is really, really helpful. And that's phoneburner.com. And so who want, Inga, you know, phone burner pretty well, right? You know, phone burner. Um, pretty well. Phone burner is an, it's also a cloud-based app that you can literally, you can try it for 60 minutes free. You can try it for another 60 minutes free. Just keep giving them a different email account. Um, <laughs> and what you, what's awesome about phone, phone burner is that again, it, you can make all of your calls without actually having to dial a phone number. So, I mean, what, from the time it takes to look up a phone number on, on like on a spreadsheet, to actually entering into your cell phone, you, you can bypass all that by just taking a CSV file or a right. Excel spreadsheet and uploading it to this website, phoneburner.com. And then you can set up a voice message. So anytime you hit somebody's voicemail, it automatically, you just send the voice message right from, and I did, I was always doing this for my computer. So when I was making phone right. burner calls, and you can do it from your phone as well. Um, so, and phone burner, it lessens the time that you use on those in between getting phone numbers and getting to the next call. So you can literally go through a hundred phone calls in an hour, which is, would usually take like, you know, 20 phone calls in an hour. If you had to look at everything. Here, here's what's, here's what's really cool. And this is the, this is by far has been my favorite way to use phone burner is I don't, in most, most realtors, most loan officers, we say we need to do it and we always don't do it because we just don't have time. 
but it's really hard to find time to call all of our past clients, let's say, or all of our sphere of influence and database. So the strategy that I love um, doing is, Inga, you said you record a, a voicemail. So what I'll do is I'll record the voicemail and it'll say, hey, it's Richard, just uh, thinking about you, wanted to say hi. Um, let me know if you need anything. I hope you and the family had a great holiday season. Uh, anybody you hear about buying or selling in the next six months, uh, you know, give them my name. I'd love to help them, right? So I record that voicemail. Now we upload the, the Excel spreadsheet, like uh, CVS file, like uh, Inga said. And so now my virtual assistant starts making the calls. And, and like Inga said, let's say they make the first call, the person answers. They're just going to use the script. Hey, this is, um, you know, this is Michelle with the Richard Smith team. Richard asked me to give you a call. And he just wanted you to know, blah, 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 whatever you want him to say, right? Then um, think about this. 75% of the people that we call do not answer their phone. That's the average across our country. So no, I, I heard something, Richard. I heard that if you get a voicemail the first time, wait 30 seconds and dial back. True. And a lot of people. So everybody do that. has their phone on them. They're just waiting to see what the, don't leave a message right. right away. Just dial right back. But so, yeah, I've heard that. And that, that, um, but it's crazy if you think about it that 75, 70, it's really between 70 and 80% of people don't answer their phone. But think about this. Let's say you have, all your past clients, all your sphere of influence, all your database. You don't have time to call them, but they're getting calls from you because when they listen to their voicemail, it's your voice and you're not the one that made the call, your VA is. So the 30% that do answer the phone, the, the virtual assistant talks to, you know, and I've heard people say, well, that's weird that they're hearing from the VA and not me. People really don't care. And, you know, it's, it's not... I, Honestly, it's not as good as you calling, but think about this. You not calling at all is a lot worse. And it's literally one of the hardest things to do is to call our database. So at least the 70% that doesn't answer, hear our voice and the majority call back if you're wanting to touch base. If they don't call back, at least they heard you in your top of mind and you asked for, for business. So it's, it's really a a no brainer when you think about it. So I would fall out of my chair if my loan officer, sir, is, ever called me, I'd be like, really? <laughs> like, you know, like what's the holiday? And because yeah. <laughs> I know that they, have, they, they don't even know, you know, like that they should be calling me because right. every year or every couple of months just to see how I'm doing. Like I would be, I have way more respect for people that call their customers, whether you're a car salesperson a loan officer, a real estate agent, than those that don't. Yeah. You know what? This is a, a relationship building business, you guys. Like, get out there and build relationships with people that you already did business with. The lowest hanging fruit. Yes. And, and the tools that we're, we're teaching you about um, to do so. And, and phone burner, the cool thing with phone burner too is you can put any number you want in the caller ID. So let's say you have, your, let's say you want your cell number in there because you want these people to call you back. You can put your cell number. Or if you want, you can put your VA's number so when they call, they talk to somebody, but it you have that control to do that. So that is really, really cool. In my opinion, if you're, you're marketing and you want more business, put your cell number because people are going to call you back. And like you said, it's a relationship business. People need to hear from us. I heard, I was listening to a podcast and most people either hate or love Grant Cardone, but Grant made a really, really good point. We always talk about people need to know, like, and trust us. They do business with people they know, like, and trust, right? We've heard that a million times. What Grant said is they don't even need to know, or I'm sorry, they don't even need to like you or trust you. They, people need to know who you are. You need to be out there. Um, they'll grow to, to uh, trust you and to like you, but you've got to be out there. You've got to be making those calls. You've got to be doing the things that we're too busy to do. And I think that's where hiring a virtual assistant works so well because it helps duplicate ourselves to get 
out there. People have to know who we are. I can I can over and over that the our past clients, if we don't talk to them, if we don't call them, if we don't touch them in some way, they forget us fast. They are getting referrals and they're giving it to somebody else, or they just don't do anything, which you know we want them to think of us. So we have to be top of mind. Sorry, went on a little rant there. <laughs> No, so so basically, so basically, going back to what we were talking about, you guys, the essentials are simple. You know, a phone system, Skype, Ring Central, phone burner to make the ease of calling, getting through lists, calling your past database, calling a, a number of people, and, and being able to leave a pre-recorded <clears throat> message that's your own voice is huge. Um, Asana to manage projects. <clears throat> Screen, screenomatic or Jing project to be able to communicate with our VAs effectively and efficiently to show them how to do something or what you need done so that there are no questions, um, you know. And what, what else are we, what else did I miss? We kind of talked about a couple of different things. Well, you think, you know, <clears throat> well, this is just, you know, a basic tool, a very basic tool, but this is one of the um, frequent um, questions that um, clients would ask me is, for example, if they're not 100% um, confident that they could provide, you know, the login information for their databases for, um, for the virtual, I mean, to the virtual assistant, I mean, how can they be able to access the contacts? So um, one of the basic tool is really Google spreadsheet, you guys. I mean, it's, um, you can just export your contacts and your virtual assistant could just copy and paste. Um, the the persons or you know um, your lead contacts and you know your virtual assistant could just put you know call remarks on there for your monitoring and you can do some or you can do your own color coding for you know for the call results and um, it's real time and you can have an access to it your virtual assistant can have an access to it you know anytime so awesome so I and know we're one of your I'm concerns. I know we're going to need to wrap up here, but I do want to, I want to give, I want to ask you something, Gerard, but first I want to, I've thought about this over the last, man, six, seven years that what is the biggest mistake over the years that I've made when hiring a virtual assistant? And then what is the biggest mistake that others have made when we've tried to help or kind of tell them, Hey, this is what, you can do. I mean, we have a whole, we have a whole um, checklist of what to do and how to hire somebody. But the biggest mistake that I made many times, and I've seen so many is getting the wrong virtual assistant, because if you can have them do all sorts of these tasks and making phone calls. But if it's the wrong person, if it's not the right fit for what you're asking them to do, it doesn't work. And I've had people tell me like, I've tried hiring a virtual assistant. It just doesn't work with me. No, 99% of the time it's because you've got the wrong person. So Gerard, what, um, what do you do kind of in a nutshell to help people avoid from, of making that same mistake? Like what, cause you know, remote assistant scout, we basically help avoid you know, people from making those same mistakes. So can you kind of, in a nutshell, talk about what you do uh, to ensure that um, the realtor, the loan officer, the insurance agent get the right VA? It boils down to the virtual assistant's um, credentials and the truthfulness of the credentials as well as their work uh, records. So what I do here is I have a network of um, recruitment specialists and I've been connected to um, other firms as well and um, agencies or VA agencies here in the Philippines that we try to make sure that they're not kind of like blacklisted. And um, we also do the efforts of doing some background checking. So I'm really responsible for, you know, um, detecting red flags. I mean, right in there from their resume, you can see, I can detect um, the number one red flag and I would know if they're not 100% truthful. With their credentials, which is very rampant right now. I mean, if if I didn't have any experience working with a realtor, and if I have a friend working with a or, or 
if I have a friend currently working with a realtor right now, you know, I can just ask the person, hey, um, what are the things that I'm doing? So I just can fake my credentials. And, you know, I'll walk my way through it. So um, those are the things that, um, that we do just to make sure that everything is, you know, um, is real. About um, the virtual assistant and their work ethics too. So or one thing that people probably um, one, along the lines of verifying, you know, the credentials, background, all that good stuff. You know, obviously we're not doing a background check, but we're but we need to know like that this person does work, has work, has experience. They're not just saying that they've done all those things because honestly, we don't. You know, we're not going to go check their university or whatever. But yeah. the one thing, um, to to be able to, and I'm sure this weighs on a lot of people, like. How do I protect my passwords, my important stuff? Like, so there are services like LastPass, you guys, that mm -hmm. are one of the tools that we didn't really touch on. We'll touch it up maybe next week. Um, that that there are things to protect yourself, to protect your, you know, your emails, your calendars, all that good stuff. And, and we'll discuss that next week. So we can do a continuation of, of the essential tools and kind of like what what you need um, once your virtual assistant's hired on and what once they're once we found the right virtual assistant for you. Yep. And so if anybody is interested in hiring a virtual assistant this year, you can direct message, you can comment below, you can call us and we'll give you um, information, ask, uh, answer your questions. We have pretty much everything that you would need to hire that right person. So um, just ask and we'll shoot it out. Uh, give us a call. Any questions? Or I, I know I had a million questions when I first started, and the biggest issue I had is I jumped in too fast and hired a bunch of different people that didn't work out. And you know what we've done is we've put together information to prevent that from happening for you. So, yep, mm -hmm. just comment below, and Gerard and I will will get back with you. Awesome. So we are here, you guys, to help you navigate into 2019 to make it the best year possible to get you the right person to be able to help your business grow and explode to the levels that you want it to. So um, if you have any questions, get in touch with Gerard, get in touch with Richard at Remote Scout, um, like us on Facebook, and we'll be in touch. We'll see you guys next week, right? Same time, same place, same channel. I like this format a lot. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Yeah, and, <laughs> and we'll be able to and we'll be able to share screens on some of these which will be really helpful to people too awesome well nice to see um, you guys and happy new year to you too and uh we'll be in we'll be in touch next week all Thank right you. Have an awesome day bye you too